How was I gonna start this off? I forgot. Oh yeah. That's an awfully hot coffee pot. Should I drop it? I'm on not. Just because you have a lot of subscribers doesn't mean that you will care about your freaking rapping. I was just planning to make a goof on everything. No, Call of Duty just came out. Go on freaking reviews, bitch. All the new subscribers is Hello and welcome to another episode of Hey! This franchise is already dead, but let's shove another big black dick into its ass so it will scream and twitch so we can get a little bit more of that green. <laughs> Respect the soap. This day we set upon a mighty endeavor. You play as a soldier with a name and you're part of a group of other soldiers with names and you play through the D-Day invasion in Normandy and push deep into the Third Reich. And no, not everybody back then in Germany was a Nazi. Oh hey, that's my boy Frank! Hurry before they reload! Move it! Call of Duty WW2 is a first person shooter. You can carry two guns with you and exchange them with the ones that are lying on the ground at any time. And although the Call of Duty games have always been known for, let's say, stretching reality, you're basically a one man army, they do make an effort to make you feel like you're part of a group of soldiers by adding this feature where you can command certain members of your platoon to throw you ammo, grenades, or even to highlight all the enemies. Highlighting enemies? So that's how you won the war back then. Good to know. And your experience in game can vastly vary depending on what difficulty you play on. As we are used to from the franchise, there are four in total, from easy turning you into Terminator and veteran into a hooker that catches all the cum shots, I mean gunshots. What the hell? I just won the battle. Why is he giving up? The game is linear in the sense that you fight your way from one battle to the next and there is no freedom or exploration apart from a couple of collectibles. All it takes to progress is triggering a certain event by stepping over an invisible line. The game's job is to keep you from doing that by spawning an endless amount of German soldiers. I'm actually very interested in history. In fact, I have been to Normandy when I was 13 years old. That's right, that's me, I don't know if you can see, that's me, right here, <coughs> at uh, Point du Oc, which is uh, French and it means, means something. I was only 13 years old, I could have been anything, Kevin Spacey's boyfriend. And now comes the Ultra Hammer. This is real sand from Omaha Beach that I picked up when I was there. So the point of all this is, World War II is real, be respectful, and uh, this is no laughing matter. To keep things fresh and consistent with past installments, Call of Duty WW2 also has a fair share of gameplay variety. It puts you behind the wheel of a car, on a plane, behind turrets, and there are missions that favor a stealthy approach, even with awareness indicators. Another interesting change is going from the automatic health regeneration system to the very old school health bar that some of you may remember from Call of Duty 1. And what you definitely remember from the past Call of Duty games are scripted moments, and there are Plenty of those again. Oh Jesus! Wait, wait, wait. Um, just to clarify, is he dead? But no need to worry, bitches. No Call of Duty game can live without this. This is the best part. Call me Phantom. <laughs> if you clicked on this video just to see me roast Call of Duty, then you have to wait a little bit longer. <laughs> but I want to make it clear. This review is entirely based on Call of Duty World War II's single player campaign. Why? Because I actually have a past with a Call of Duty franchise. A dark past. When I was but 15 years old, I was one of those Call of Duty kids who felt 
obligated to tell other people in the chat what their mothers were up to. They were having sex, but I was also pretty good, so I joined a clan, I did some tournaments, some real MLG shit, but then everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Modern Warfare 2 came out. And for me, that was the beginning of the end for Call of Duty's multiplayer. Skill was entirely removed from the equation, and now it was all about who can get the craziest kill streaks. Oh, look at me, I have an attack helicopter. <laughs> Whore, whore. I got scarred for life, I quit the clan, I quit Call of Duty, and I haven't looked back ever since. <laughs> okay, so now let's get into this bitch. First of all, I gotta say, going back to World War II seems like such an easy way to get back to the former glory of the franchise because it is pretty much dead in the ass. But it did tickle my dick quite a bit, and I have to confess, the moment I picked up an MP40, Oh god. Fuck me hard and call me kraut? It's just pure nostalgia. And to all y'all haters out there, there really shouldn't be any doubt that Call of Duty is among the kings of first person shooters in terms of atmosphere and also gameplay. It's buttery smooth and precise. There's a reason why the foundation of the gameplay and the controls haven't been reworked since Call of Duty 4. Because they don't have to be. They are top of the game and always have been before. When I play Call of Duty, I am 100% in control. What I am not in control of are all these new subscribers over 1000 now Boy! <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> moving on why do people like me enjoy the single player so much some people complain about the scripted events and the over-the-top action but oddly that is exactly what I love and expect and appreciate about this franchise so much it's just these moments like oh my god that make it so special for me. And by the motherfucking by, Call of Duty WW2 is ridiculously cinematic. Look at them cutscenes, boy! That is some movie level shit, dog. It reminded me a lot of Saving Private Ryan. Take the Bangalore and get to the seawall! We have a clear path to the bunker! <sighs> Daniel! If you haven't seen that movie, please find your nearest window and jump out of it. Into a trampoline, with a hole, above water, with a shark that's dead. From Ebola. The amount of references is just insane and I love that. It's almost like you are playing through the movie. You could almost call this the unofficial video game adaptation of Saving Private Ryan, but they just didn't have the rights to it. It's lovely. In terms of presentation and atmosphere, Call of Duty WW2 takes the cake and shits on it. When you are in the action and screams and shots and explosions are around you, it is incredibly intense. It's just the type of stuff that only COD can deliver. It's magical, man! Especially when you take into account the beautiful environments that you fight in. Like the streets of Paris. That's what they do best. They give you a beautiful scenery and then let you battle in them. It's a gorgeous game. Oh my god. There is nothing like some nice pussy as always i enjoy the variety the driving the flying the stealth saul goodman surprisingly during the tank mission there's even some destructible environment which is a great addition that's a trip hitting us in the front upper story right in the breach anton if you keep praising this game i will be angry come down boy i am fair Always fair. So let's talk about where Call of Duty World War 2 is slightly gay. Though they try to build up characters and relationships, it's about as successful as something that is totally not successful. The garrison is run by SS and police for Heinrich. And he couldn't find me. It came from my parents. Uh, but I think uh, you should uh, focus on uh, sucking my sausage. Although facial animations are fantastic, you won't care about anything or anyone. You all right? Uh, I'm sorry, Paul. Listen good, kid. It's only natural to be scared. No, it's not. Fuck off. For instance, there's this rivalry between you and your platoon leader, and this is some weird-ass antagonism that seems artificial just to create some villain. Entirely unnecessary, and it just felt off. It didn't feel corny or cliche, just stupid. This drunk son of a penis sucker. Briefing's about to start. What the hell are you boys doing? Then there's Sergeant Pearson. A real sweetheart. Well, you think you're special, huh? 
The crowds are gonna eat your lunch. Overall, I think that it's very hard for a Call of Duty game to stand on its own two feet. Because we as gamers always see the context. We know what they have been delivering for the past years and again, this installment is also lacking innovation. The truth is that basically every Call of Duty is the same game but in a different setting. The fact that health doesn't replenish is a change but one that just sounds cool on paper. In reality, it's inconsequential. At this point, we've all played so many games that have auto recharge and health bars. Either way doesn't make a difference, it isn't noticeable. Although I said before that this is a very cinematic experience, it is a lot weaker than previous games. There are some memorable moments but the campaign comes to a conclusion prematurely and leaves you wondering what the fick. The beautiful strategy map that shows how you push the Nazis back and how you progress would have been a great feature if it actually led anywhere. This was supposed to be a journey from Normandy into the heart of Germany, but it ain't. It just ends in some trivial fucking bridge defending mission, credits roll and goodbye Newton zone. I was just sitting there shocked. Like, what? 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 Don't get me wrong, I expect Call of Duty campaigns to be short hashtag Chinese style. That's not the issue, but they need to end on a big bang. And this one just doesn't. It just ends. And then they pretend like they have created the deepest characters in the world and that the player would care about them. Fuck that! I thought it was good till the credits rolled, but that definitely knocked it down a few notches. Don't get me wrong, if I was actually in war, I'd just sit in the corner like... But this is a game. I want to play! Thinking back to the Modern Warfare 2 campaign, there was way more shit happening there overall. And then, during the most intense moment, I got pulled out because of some cringy ass German. Der Schweiß Deutsch. Ausgezeichnet. Welche sind die Juden? Fick Dirk. Fick Dirk. <laughs> Fick Dirk. <laughs> I know the guy can't speak German, but. For a German ear, that's just... Fick dick. I'm sorry, it's just... I mean, let's face it for a second here, okay? It is still a dying franchise clinging to life as hard as it can, desperately attempting to be relevant again every year by adding almost nothing of substance. And at this point, I think the only reason we talk about it is because we have to talk about it. Why are people praising this, including me? We just say, hey, it's just like back then. Wow, great. That is the lowest fucking bar ever. How about you go forward and create something truly innovative and relevant instead of microwaving the same old shit with a different cover, bitch! My first playthrough took me 6 hours, which is pretty short but not out of the ordinary for this franchise. Collectibles are again very laughable meh, and not an incentive to replay anything. On the other hand, I love to play through the campaign on Veteran, I just enjoy that challenge. Never give up, it's such a wonderful eight. Of course, all these scripted moments work only the first time. Once that initial wow effect is gone, it is gone. I'm not gonna lie. I enjoyed the campaign. It's like playing a game from 2006 but with today's technology. But that is also where the problem comes in. That is not enough. Returning to the roots doesn't count as innovation. Overall I think the campaign lacked epic moments, was too short and it doesn't even come to a good conclusion. It's a fun little trip, nothing more than that. So my final rating for Call of Duty World War II single player campaign is going to be like a 6 but slightly above a 6. If you enjoyed this video, please. Do something about it!